In this screen cam recording, we're going to design the potentiometer biased um, amplifier here, common emitter, but we're going to use um, 10 base currents method. Okay, so let, let's start out with the obvious stuff. Okay, let's draw a little sketch, see where we are. At the top here, we have our supply voltage, VCC, and that's at 10 volts. We have our VE, our emitter voltage, at one third of that, so that's 3.3 volts. Okay, so we want our collector to be sat somewhere in the middle for maximum symmetrical swing. So VC is where you would expect, in this case, 6.65 volts. Okay, that means the collector can go up and all the way down to VE. Can't go any lower than VE because um, we can't go negative at the collector. So, let's see the basics. Okay, we're given the specification value for VE. And we can assume that IE, the emitter current, is the same as the collector current, okay? Because beta is large. In this case, I've missed off the spec here, beta equals 160. So, uh, uh, RE, the emitter resistance, is equal to VE divided by IC, so that's 3.3 volts, divided by 10 to the minus 3, 1 milliamp, equals 3.3K. There we go. So there's our emitter resistor designed. Let's design RC. The collector resistance is the supply voltage minus where you want the collector to sit divided by the collector current. Okay, we've already said we want the collector to sit here. That's the value of VC for maximum symmetrical swing. Okay, again then, let's put in the numbers. 10 minus 6.65 all divided by 10 to the minus 3 gives us our value of uh, collector resistance, uh, which in this case is 3.35K. Okay, as we can see, that's exactly the same as all the traditional methods. Now let's go for something a little bit simpler. What we really want to know is how much base current will flow, or needs to flow, to cause the collector current. Well, we know that value this is IB is equal to IC over uh, beta. Now, this method is very, very simple. It basically says down here we need 10 base currents. Okay? And we know Kirchhoff's current law. So, sum of the current in equals sum of the current out. We've got one base current into the base. We've got 10 base currents down here, 10 down there, one down there. We need 11 base currents here. Okay, and that gives us a, a, a reasonable bias. So let's have a, have a little look at the maths. It's very, very simple. So, VBB, the absolute potential at the base, we'll put that label on here, VBB, is equal to VE, the emitter voltage, plus VBE. Okay, and that equals 4.03 volts. Okay, like it did before. Very simple. What we're now going to do is we're simply going to say that R2 is equal to VBB, the absolute voltage at the base, minus zero because it's connected to ground, divided by the base current, or but divided by 10 base currents. So we can do 10 IC over beta. So we'll put beta up on top. Okay, really simple. Put some numbers in 4.03 times 160 all divided by 10 milliamps, 10 times 10 to the minus three. Okay, and that gives me a value for R2 of um, 64K. <coughs> Calculate R1. Well, very, very simple. We can just do it by inspection. At the top here, we've got our supply voltage, VCC. At the, the other side of the resistor, we've got VBB. So we've got VCC minus VBB, all divided by 11 IC over beta. Put beta up on top, just to keep it nice and tidy. Okay, put the numbers in. 10 minus 4.03, all divided by 11 times 10 to the minus 3. Put 160 at the top, beta value. Okay, and we've now got a value for that resistance of 87.2 uh, kilo ohms. Okay, so what I'll do now, I'm going to put those numbers into AUCAD and we'll have a little look and see how well um, 
that has simulated. We'll continue the recording into WorkCAD. Now, previously, I've run the simulation and I've done it with a textbook method. And here, are, here is the results from that simulation. Okay, we've got 132K and 88K for the two bias resistors. And we were at 915 microamps. Okay, let's put our new values in that we've calculated from this um, slightly different method. So this is 87.2K and R2, 64K. Okay, let's hit save. Simulate 1.007 milliamps. Okay, we are a little bit closer here than we were before. So um, this method not only was faster, but it actually became a little bit more accurate in, in setting up to where we, where we wanted to be. I just moved back to my um, OCAD files, uh, my uh, PowerPoint files. One of the reasons that this method actually tends to work a little bit better is because we're actually accounting for the base current flowing into the base as well as the, into the BIOS network. Whereas previously with the Norton equivalent method, we didn't actually do that. We, we were accounting for, or we were sort of approximating those values. So that's the end of this screencast. And you've seen two ways of, of um, calculating the potentiometer bias.